Let's say Jesus made everything. Nothing was made without him. Is this true? If we go clear back to the beginning of the Bible, what Moses wrote in Genesis 1.1 tells us in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now if we compare that to John 1.1, it says in the beginning was the Word. Who? Jesus. Jesus. And the Word? Who? Jesus. Was with God and the Word? Who? Jesus. Jesus was God. Okay, so this is Genesis 1.1 said God created the heavens and the earth. John 1.1 said that Jesus was God. Now yesterday at the prayer meeting, Lena shared something with us that really put this into perspective. And I probably won't get this all right, so I'm kind of going to paraphrase what she said. But what she said was, God came out of nowhere because there was nowhere to come from. And he stood on nothing because there was nothing to stand on. And he reached out into nothing, and he created everything. And then he said, hey, this is good. But nobody heard him, because there wasn't anybody there yet. Now that kind of puts into perspective just what it was like for God to create the heavens and the earth. Then we look down, we see in, in Genesis 1.26, it says that God said, let us make man in our own image. You see how God's using the plural for himself? Let us make man in our own image. That's because who was there with God? Jesus. So God is speaking of himself as the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so this is where mankind, you and I, came into the picture. Okay, well, it's always easy for people to say, well, how do you know this? Were you there? Well, I may look like I'm old enough to have been there. <laughs> Fact is, I wasn't. But Hebrews 11.3 gives us something to stand on. Hebrews 11.3 tells us, by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. Notice what that says, by the who, the word, Jesus. So this Jesus is an only begotten son like no other only begotten son because he's not only man, but he is the creator of the universe. Now just how awesome is that? How awesome is that that Jesus created the universe? That he was able to create us and everything we know by the power of his hand. Now creating the world seems like kind of a hard act to follow. All right, what do you do to follow that up? So let's see what Jesus did. Read with me, please, John 1, 14. Ready? Begin. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so once Jesus had created the world, he became flesh. We beheld his glory. Imagine that, the creator of the universe becoming a man and dwelling in his creation. You can just only imagine what kind of spectacular glory must have followed around the creator of the universe. Let's take a look at some of the ways we beheld his glory. Well, first of all, we know that he was born of a virgin, a virgin named Mary. Wow. you imagine what it would be like, ladies, to be selected to be the mother of the Son of God? She must have been royalty, princess, something, right? Oh, no, wait. Mary was a common girl. She was married to a carpenter. But how about Joseph? How about Joseph? He must have been a powerful, wealthy man. I mean, God wouldn't just give his son to someone who couldn't provide the best of everything for him, could he? Oh, no, wait. Jesus was born in a manger. Well, certainly important people of the time, the kings... The, uh, the priests, the powerful men, they must have recognized who he was. They must have shown him great respect, don't you think? Oh, no, wait. King Herod tried to have him killed. Okay, that's a politician for you. But what about the common people? What about the people where Jesus lived? Surely they must have loved him. They must have worshipped him. They must have recognized him as somebody really, really special. Oh, no, wait. 
when he preached at Nazareth? No, the people took offense at him. But there were his disciples, the 12. Surely they must have loved him. They, after all, they'd seen the miracles. They knew what he had done. They knew who he was. No, wait. Peter denied him three times. And Judas, well, Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Okay, well, after this kind of treatment, surely he must have reached a point where he said, enough's enough. I'm the son of God, and I'm going to kick butt and take names. No, wait. He let him nail him to a cross at Calvary. He must have done something. Surely he must have done something for the way they mistreated him. Oh, no, wait. He prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. What's up with this picture? You know, I started this message off with, a, with the uh, statement that Jesus has always been the same, yesterday, today, and forever. But now, I'm starting to wonder myself, how could this be? How could it be that the only begotten Son of God who created the world and became flesh says we beheld his glory, but where's the glory in all those things that he suffered? Well, hold that thought. Hold that thought for just a minute. Let's look at the Jesus of forever and see if there isn't something missing here. Read with me, please, Revelation 19 and verse 16. Ready? Begin. And he hath on his vestiture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay, it says he has on his vestiture and his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Now that's the glory kind of thing we're talking about, right? That sounds like the Jesus who created the world. That's the Jesus through whom we behold God's glory. Let's read a little bit more of this. Back up in verse 11, it said, I saw heaven open to behold a white horse, and he was called faithful and true, and righteous. in righteousness he judges and wages war. Yeah, 